What's up, everybody? This is Phil Rogacki. And I'm Jared Abergina. You're listening to Two Tree Guys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Phil Rogacki here with the Two Tree Guy Podcast. Of course, you tapped on it, wherever it may be. Uh, you're listening to it now. I appreciate you guys tuning in to listen to this. And to all the fans out there that have shared the podcast, posted the podcast, liked the podcast, DM'd, send us questions and things like that. I appreciate you guys doing that because that's the fee. So if you're listening to this, that's the fee. You must Share it, pass it on, some of the things you're going to learn because this is how we grow. This is how we're able to do more. But if you're a first-time listener and you've never listened to this podcast before, uh, we have a lot of different things we talk about on this podcast, You know, which you're going to hear today from uh, Bobby Winters out of uh, Rome, Georgia uh, at the TCI Expo. He works with a company called Trees Unlimited. Uh, we're going to hear his story. We're going to hear how he got in the industry. We're going to hear life you know, roads and adventures that he's been on, the ups and downs, the ins and outs uh, for that, where we bring individual badasses from our industry and we hear their story, man. This is their platform to be able to tell, you know, the good, bad and ugly of of just life and where they're at and what they're looking forward to in the future. We have our safety talks. We tackle crucial safety messages with real life examples and, you know, cautionary tales, emphasizing kind of the importance of safety first uh, mindset in our tree care industry where everybody needs to go home at the end of the day. We have our gear talks. You know, we, we dive into an in-depth exploration of tree care gear, comparing different products in the market and providing insight uh, into their uses, advantages, innovations, what's coming out, what you like, dislike. You know, you just get the raw truth uh, to that. And then we have our training talk. Um, you know, where we, we do a comprehensive training session, sharing kind of valuable insights to help you guys refine your skills and adopt maybe new techniques in the tree care realm. Uh, and we have our full length. If you're in California in the studio, uh, we have our full length. So again, guys, this podcast is made for you. I don't get paid for this. This is for you. Everything we put in, all the marketing, all the social media, all the stuff we post is so that you guys can have something to take to learn more and to be better uh, in your day-to-day life and be able to give back to our industry. So I appreciate everybody, of course, again. Uh, And we're going to dive into this. Bobby, welcome, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Good, good, good. How's St. Louis for you? Different. Different. Uh, I'm, from What's, small, I'm from a small town in in northwest Georgia. So northwest Georgia, yeah. not northeast. You don't no. talk to the northeast no, no, people. No, we don't associate with those at all. <laughs> Just the, the northwest. Definitely. You had to make. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what 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 have you been doing here so far in St. Louis? Anything awesome? Anything you see? A lot of tree gear. Spent a lot of money. That's you spent a lot of money. <laughs> you spent a lot of money. What What's the one thing you bought uh, this year that you're excited about? Uh, this year, I mean, I've bought. I've finally upgraded from. Climbing with a Blake hitch to a zigzag, so good. Did we'll you buy a zigzag? Out. No, I've had that for about three weeks. Okay, uh, I got me a new climbing line here. Good. I needed that. I've been I used the True Blue for the longest. I didn't really like the True Blue. It's, yeah, especially with a zigzag, it don't work well. Gotcha, gotcha. Good man. Good, good. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of products you're like, what the heck is that? What do I do with <laughs> right. that? You know, Definitely. and. Uh, there's so much training out there in our industry uh, with the Academy, with Nats, with Arbor Master, with uh, uh, Noble Oaks, uh, a lot of videos online, you know, talking to all of our, the cust- not the customers, the vendors that are out there to help you be able to advance and grow. Right. Uh, there's so much technology for you to be able to use oh, to be yeah, a better definitely. climber, safer climber, more efficient climber, and keep your body intact. <laughs> keep a body intact? That's another one that's tough. It is. Yeah, it is it tough. Is. I'm, you know, Six three, two hundred eighty pounds. It's it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So you know, on the show, it's this is your time, man. This is this is your show uh, to talk about your story and put it out to the world. Uh, you don't know where it's going to go. I mean, it lives there forever right. in the universe. Oh yeah. Um, I've had people come on there and uh, who told their story. I had a gentleman, John, uh, told his story, and he came in today and was like, "Hey, man, last year." Um, when I sat down with you and we talked about uh, my story and I got a call from a guy out of Arizona, 
just called me. I, I don't know how he got my freaking number. He goes, he called me and said, hey, hey, this is so-and-so uh, from so-and-so tree company in Arizona. He goes, I just want to let you know, I listened to your, your message and your story on Two Tree Guys, and I needed that. And thank you. That's all yeah. I want to say. Thank you. And and John was like, how'd you get my number? He goes, I looked you up online. I called you. And John was running uh, uh, skids here at the time, moving stuff. He stopped. And he goes, man, that meant so much to me because I don't know how powerful my story is to go out to the world. So this is your opportunity to tell your story. And oh, you yeah. don't know the lives that you could affect or help. So let's dive into it, Bobby. All right. So we'll, we'll start from the beginning. Back when I was... I mean, even as a child, I mean, I had a great, great childhood, great parents. Um, I mean, it was, I couldn't ask for it to be no better. Um, went on into teenage years. You know, I played in multiple Christian bands. I even became a chaplain at the jail, local jail in Floyd County in northwest Georgia. And uh, done construction work, you know, dabbled a little bit in uh, mechanic work with uh, Kubotas and Bobcat, stuff like that. Um, then about 18 hit, well, 17, I had a, I had a bad wreck, flipped the truck, rolled it four times. And now I have a crooked spine and a twisted pelvis. And so that started my downfall and led to the addiction of pain pills. And I let every, I slipped away from everything. And what kind of pain pills? Uh, I, got, I got all the way up to Roxy thirties and, and Roxy thirties, never heard of them. Well, Roxy, Roxy I, cotton. Roxy cotton. Yeah. yeah, they're that's tough. That's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wasn't prescribed those. However, that was the strongest one that they made. They don't make them anymore. Uh, they were thirty dollars a pill, a dollar um, a milligram. Um, how long would that last for you? I was about four a day. Wow. Uh, so I mean, it got very expensive. I I done a lot of things I'm not proud of as a teenager. Um, found out heroin was cheaper. Dab a little bit in heroin. Um, that's something I really don't tell hardly anybody. <laughs> so this is you told the whole world hey, today, I man, know. and uh, it's uh, it's one of those things that uh, it'll feel good oh, yeah, to get definitely. it off. You know, um, I t- not- I tell a lot of people about you know certain parts of my story, and they say, "Are you proud of it?" And I'm yeah, I'm proud of it. Um, You're here today. Yeah, I mean, this I, is, I, this I is life's journey. Uh, November the seventh this year, I celebrated ten years sober. Uh, so that's a that's a Fuck milestone, yeah, man. Um, ten years, dude. Good but, job. Yeah, I got anyway with the drugs and done a lot of things I shouldn't have, and I ended up going to prison for, th- uh, for two years, and um, we got ten years on probation. Uh, almost done with that. Got a little less than two years left on probation, so. Well, you had some experience working in the jail, helping people. Right. And, you know, uh, I'm sure yeah. you, it, there's a part where where God wanted to put you back there for a little bit. Yeah, to, to, uh, you doing full time ministry it, there? It's not, it's not made for me, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> being, being on that side of the uh, so that side of the fence ain't for me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I got married when I was out on bond. I, I got married and. Um, ex-wife now she had she already had two boys um we ended up having a little girl that was born while i was in prison i got sent to prison you know a few weeks after we found out she was pregnant and um so yeah she was born in there when i got out she was you know two years old Hmm. and we had another little girl not long after that Um, but as soon as i got out of prison I was going to go work with my dad. He owns a, a pretty prominent construction company in Rome. Uh, I was going to go to work with him. Probation said no. You know, I, was, I don't have a, a, pay, a pay stub, you know, something proven that I'm working for. A letterhead wouldn't even work. You know, a, a letter from him, no, it wouldn't work. So I was I was stuck for about three or four weeks wondering what I was going to do. You know? Well, your dad couldn't put you on payroll? He could. However, at the time, he wasn't really dealing with a lot of payroll. Okay. So, uh, it was, uh, he had mostly 1099 employees. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, that was, was kind of difficult. However, I got looking into other jobs and 
Trees Unlimited popped up, and I was like, well, it's in Cave Spring. You know, I'll, I'll check into that. I mean, I don't. I, I climbed trees as a kid, you know, just playing around them. I got stuck in cherry tree one time. You know, got my foot stuck in it. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'll try I'll try this out. <laughs> I'm going to conquer this. Kicked right. my ass last time <laughs> right. when I was a kid. What so, year is this right now? So that was 2016. 2016, gotcha. Uh, it was uh. It was November of 2000, October 27th, 2016. is my first day starting at Trees Unlimited. And um, I've been with them ever since. And I mean, they brought me in and treated me more like family. Give me a chance. Uh, that's all I really needed was somebody. A lot of people probably wouldn't give you a chance. Yeah, it was hard. I mean, I, it is. It was and, very hard. And it makes uh, sometimes when that happens, uh, you only have one place to resort back to. Right. You know, oh, getting yeah. back in that lifestyle right. uh, because no one give you a yeah, shot. I mean, it's once you're in, once you're in the system, it's pretty much designed for failure. I mean, you got to yeah. fight to get out of it. Yeah, um, I believe in second chances. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, they give me a chance, and I'll I'll forever be grateful for that. Um, I came in working under a, ma- a certified master arborist. Uh, What's his name? Anthony McLean. I know I didn't know anything about tree work. Nothing. I mean, I could run a saw. You know, grew up working horse farm. You know, whatever. Um, so I, mean, I could run a saw. Uh, not, <laughs> not how we run them now. It definitely was what no safety to it at all. But uh, I came in under him, and he uh, he made me made me really good. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing. I, mean, I got into tree work thinking there's no way this is gonna work. My first week, I was like, I can't. I can't work for this asshole. This ain't going to work. I mean, he's the biggest asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, he's better now. Yeah. A lot better now. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I broke a record working for him. He's been with Trees Unlimited for 20, 25 plus years. Who's this? Anthony. Yeah, Anthony yeah. My yeah so he's been with, okay. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, he, and, uh, he was hard on you? He, he, was, he was very hard on me. I mean, it was. You probably needed that. I did. However, I knew how after coming out of prison, dealing with being talked down to every day, I kind of knew how to deal with it. You know, I you know how to get through. He don't know this. We will. He does now. <laughs> As of right now, it'll go through one ear and out the other. That's how it went with me. Yeah. If you know, if it was something that had to be done, I was doing it. But if he was, you know, bitching, complaining, you know, I, I just I ignored it. But um, yeah, he. Uh, I mean, they've really, really been good to me at Trees on that. Good. It's, uh, I got into it, and I was like, you know, like I said, my first week, this this ain't going to work. I'm not going to keep dealing with this. I said that for, you know, my first month. I said, I'm not going to deal with this. Second month, I'm not going to keep doing this. <laughs> here, here I am seven plus years later, and, and it, now I'm like, you know, like, I'm not going nowhere. Yeah, I yeah. said, I, almost everybody says it every day in the tree industry. <laughs> I'm going to quit today. This is it. <laughs> it's my day. <laughs> this is the day. I'm done. I, I say it every day. I'm guilty of it. <laughs> hey, I, I have it in life, too. I'm like, this is it. Why am I doing it? It's stupid. And then right. then I get around good people. I go, yeah, that's why I'm yeah. doing it. I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking big game, but I'm still <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, that led up to, led up to now. But I got a, so it was uh, 2019, got a divorce. Um, went 10 months without seeing my kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried to call every day. wanted to talk to them every single day. Tried to see them. It, it wouldn't happen. Um, that was probably the hardest moment I ever went through in my life. I mean, it still bothers me to this day because I feel like the kids are going to think Daddy didn't want to be there when they don't know that Daddy tried every day. Um, Ultimately, they'll know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just, they'll, they'll know what It's just the time, timing. Oh, yeah. They'll know. Um, but as far as going back, Relapse and using drugs that that almost done it. Mm. Um, you fought through it. Oh yeah, you definitely. didn't do it. Definitely no, no. That's a victory, I, man. I, I definitely thought about it at that moment, multiple times. Um, and then they wouldn't have seen probably Daddy for a long time. Definitely not. Um, so, out of the twenty eight people I graduated with in my rehab, I went I went into Penfield Christian Home, which is in Georgia, you know, Christian rehab facility. Uh, while I was out on bond right after right before I got married and um, so 11 out of the 28 that I graduated with have already died from overdose of heroin so how many 11 out of 28 have died of a heroin overdose since since we graduated um, 
I hear people say all the time, you can't do tree work sober. <laughs> a, a lot, of, I, I would almost agree to that. You know, in, um, in our industry, when I first got in here, um, my partner, my best friend, he's passed away. Uh, he used to always say, you know, tree guys, you're either you're either a drug addict or a Christian. Sometimes you're both, <laughs> right. you know, in here. But, you know, I don't, I don't look down on anybody. I mean, if yeah. they're struggling, hey, look, I've been there. Yeah. We all struggle you know, in a I, different I'm way. Not, I'm not going to tell you, hey, quit or, you know, this is going to happen. I'm not going to tell you that. No. I'm going to let you know I'm there. If you need me, I'm there. Uh, I, I didn't have nobody when I was there because I didn't tell nobody. Nobody knew what I was going through. Mm-hmm. I kept everything to myself. When my mother said she realized something was going on, I went up to their house and visited them one day, and I just sat down at the foot of the bed talking to talking to my parents, and I fell asleep on the bed. I slept there for a few hours, you know, midday. I never take naps. <laughs> so she said, she said, that, she said, what's wrong with you? She said, something's wrong with you. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was, uh, and it definitely was. I mean, it was a lot more than what everybody knew. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's. I wish I would have had somebody there to help me. However, I would have had to have told somebody. I was embarrassed about it. I, middle of summertime, I had to wear a long sleeve shirt because I shot and I missed and swelled up the size of a grapefruit on my arm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's a very embarrassing thing. I mean, you, yeah. a lot of people do it and a lot of people don't yeah. know that they do it. Yeah. Um, nobody wants to come out and say, hey man, I'm on heroin or you know, I'm, doing, I'm snorting coke. Or, you know, nobody wants to. <laughs> no, no. They want they want to give the impression that everything's okay. Life's right. good. I'm okay. Yes. Yeah, I came a long way. You did, man. Just, you that's proud pretty of, much all there is to say you, about it. Are you proud of yourself? <laughs> Definitely, man. Good. It's like uh, last night. Are I your kids I, proud of you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're eight and five now. I mean, eight and five. Yeah. Holy crap. My eight-year-old is super smart. My five-year-old, she's a, a shit ass. I mean, she is as mean as she can be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, however, um, yeah, I mean they're proud of me. They, uh, that's good, man. Last night I don't, I don't drink. Yeah. <laughs> last night I drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you had a drink. Uh, yeah, so I had a drink last night. And, uh, the celebration. I, I had quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, I had quite a few, and uh, we ended up at the bar. Which One, bar? I don't even know what it was. <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't even tell you how to get there. I know I walked there, but I don't know I how I got there. there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, before I got there, I was already drunk. So, yeah. Um, from the bar at the hotel. But we got there, and there's a there's a guy. He and uh, I got I just got to talking to him at the bar, and I told him I said yes, I'm scheduled to do this podcast tomorrow, and uh, <laughs> he said I said I'm kind of nervous about it. I said I don't get nervous at all. I'm never nervous around anybody. I said, but this mm-hmm. kind of got me nervous. And he gave me his card. And he said, man, you got this. And he said, tell me a little bit of your story. So I told him a little bit. He said, man, he said, people want to hear that. He said, there's people that's just like you that need to hear that, that need to know that there's a chance. I mean, there is a chance. There's a and chance. Rehab didn't change me. I changed me. I mean, Bingo. it don't matter. You can go Bingo. rehab a thousand times. If you don't want it, it's not going to happen. Got to want it. So, uh, yeah. you do your story. Stories are powerful. I don't care. You know, somebody that had a good life, didn't do drugs, you know, went to school, went to college, did everything you were supposed to. That story resonates with people. Right. You know, that's your story, man. Oh, yeah. and it's powerful. No matter what people that went through a hard life, didn't have a dad, you know, lived down the streets. That story resonates. It's powerful. It's your story, man. And there's no uh, other story like that. And there's, I mean, there's one thing that needs to be clarified about that as well as, like I said, I had a great childhood. I had great parents. Uh, I had a brother and sister, you know, they're, they're awesome. Um, they never, my brother and sister's never been in trouble. I did mm-hmm. <laughs> bad. Yeah. And, uh, I bet you they prayed for you every single day. They did. They never gave up on me. Never gave up. Never. Um, That's the thing about blood and family. I've seen my sister cry when she was, you know, while I was in prison. She'd come visit me. She's eight years younger than me. And uh, I've seen her cry, you know, wanting her big brother home. Uh, Which, you know, a lot of families go through that. But it don't hit a lot of people like it hits me. I mean, it hit me to the point I had to change for my sister. So at this point, I had to change for me. I had to change for my my one daughter at the time. I got to change for my sister. 
my mother would, you know, write me letters saying that she couldn't even sleep because she was worried about me. So I had to change for her. No, so I mean, it's, you know, I had to change for me and everybody around me. I mean, it was that or they were going to have you problems. Do, you just, you know, when you when you get into that, you're just not destroying your own life. You're destroying the lives around you. Everybody, yeah. everybody around. Affects you. Affects everybody. You. Definitely. Yeah. So. And you're here, man. Parents are proud of you. Sisters oh, yeah. are proud of you. Your but, kids are proud of you. The industry that's listening to this is proud of you, man. Yeah. But like I was saying real quick, they, um, I've heard people say, well, his parents, it's, it's his parents' fault. It's not their fault, man. You know, I, I understand. I've got friends that came from their parents being abusive towards them. You know, mom, I got a, I got a good friend that I was in rehab with. He saw his mom die, I mean, was murdered in front of him. Uh, now he owns Your Haven Place of Recovery in uh, Bremen, Georgia. And he's been, and me and him celebrated 10 years clean, four days apart. Uh, he got clean four days before I did. And, uh, I mean, he came, he never had his dad, you know, had a, had a bad childhood, very bad. Yeah. Uh, he made something of himself. I mean, it don't, it don't matter what happens, you can change it. You got to want to change it. Mm hmm. It's not anybody's fault but yours how your life turns out. That is the truth. And, uh, I mean, people need to realize that. That's awesome, man. So so where you're at now in life and in the future, where, where's your focus? Where's your goals? What what do you want? Well, my biggest goal right now is hopefully the start of the year, get the certified arborist exam, get oh, yeah. that over with. Uh, yeah. I want to I keep growing with it. I could have already taken it. I don't like failing. That's something that happened when I was going through everything is mm-hmm. – I don't like failure at all. I know I could have probably passed that test five years ago, but I don't want to take it with a chance that there, that I might fail it. <laughs> Even though I can retake it, mm-hmm. I want to pass it the first time. Mm-hmm. So uh, hopefully I'll get that done here soon. Get it done. When are you going to get it done? I'm hoping around January. January what? I'm not sure if it's that date. Pick a date. <laughs> we'll go, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go with January the 10th. January the 10th. I need to have it done by then. We'll do that. Put it out there, man. It's in the universe now. Oh, yeah. January 10th. You know, uh, getting out of jail, getting out of rehab, turning your life around. You know, you're, you're only as good as your word. Right. And this word's to yourself. Oh, yeah. January 10th. Make that shit happen, that's man. That's it. Okay? That is it. Yeah. And to anybody that says they can't do it, I got seven herniated discs, arthritis in my spine. A twisted spine and a twisted pelvis. You so can you it. can do it. <laughs> you can do it. I'm 6'3", 280 pounds, and I still climb. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, at the at the podcast, at, you know, the Academy Training Company, uh, what can we do to help you be more successful? You know, man, I'll, uh, I, I can make myself successful. All I need is somebody telling me, hey, you're doing a good job. That means more to me than anything is having a support group saying, hey, you got this. Even though I'm doing good, I don't even think about drugs no more. I need I need to know that I've, that I've got this. I want people to you know, see me and say, this guy's got this. Mm-hmm. That's all I need. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, you guys have heard it today with Bobby uh, Winners out of Rome, Georgia, and Trees Unlimited. Um, what's your phone number, Bobby? 706-506. Zero seven five two. Say it one more time. Seven zero six five zero six zero seven five two. There you guys have it, man. When you guys listen to this and hear this, uh, this if this story inspired you, if you learned something, if you got something, uh, if it motivated you, share it with Bobby. Tell him he's doing a good job. Share that this helped him. Uh, that what motivates us to do more. So, man, I appreciate you on the show. Appreciate you sharing. Yes, sir. Um, this with us uh, means a lot. Uh, this was great, man. It helped me. You know, it. helped me. You, you got a voice. Oh, yeah, man. You know, no matter where you're in life, that story is powerful. Tell oh, yeah. people your story. Definitely. Um, now they have my number. I mean, if they need, if anybody needs it. any any help or they need to talk to somebody, call yeah. me. Exactly. I'm don't there. be don't be sending any weird pictures or anything yeah, like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want none of that. Uh, but you know, you got something, you need some help, reach out to him, man. You, you got someone that can support you that been through some stuff. So Bobby, I appreciate you, man. Yes, appreciate, appreciate everything. You. Guys, you know, the fee, uh, share the show. If you got something out of this and, uh, just remember to continue to 
elevate the standard of our industry through safety training and, of course, innovation. See you guys. Thank you.